Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, a channel where I post daily vlogs about my entrepreneurial journey. If you're new to the channel, I own a search engine optimization agency with 20 clients within the UK, and I just post about business and personal development on here. So let's get straight into it for today. So I actually posted a job advert on LinkedIn today. So uh, if you don't know about my story, I outsource most of my work with regards to the SEO agency, and I'm trying to take it in-house. So I posted my first post on LinkedIn in a very long time, and it felt like everyone was being nice to me, which is pretty cool. Um, and the reason why I say it's pretty cool is because a lot of people laughed at me, you know, when I started my entrepreneurial journey, uh, like a hell of a lot of people laughed at me and it was really tough to take at the start. Like it just wounded me in terms of my self-esteem uh, because I was a senior recruitment consultant and I became, I quit that and I started my own SEO agency and people laughed hard at that, right? Uh, not only my close friends, but other people, um, you know, just talking shit. And obviously it hurt my ego because I went from, you know, earning a lot of money to just being a bit of a laughing stock and like, I'd always get like people coming back to me like so-and-so said this about you and I'd be like oh great uh, I went from like you know kind of being like up there to just being like at the right bottom and I had like barely any clients barely making any money and it was really tough for me to take and I logged on to LinkedIn I posted this job advert and it was the first time I popped up on LinkedIn in a long time right so I must have got about 20 DMs from 20 different people just being like congrats on the agency so that felt cool right uh, because I remember how hard people laughed at me at the start and not only did people laugh at me you know for starting an SEO agency um and when I started posting content, it got like a million times worse. Uh, the amount of people would view my profile and it was just so obvious that they were talking, you know, behind my back. It'd be like uh, a group of 10 people viewing my profile at the same minute. I was like, great, uh, they're talking to each other. <laughs> and it was really hard for me to take at the start um, because obviously, I, like even prior to me posting content, I never post on social media, just on my personal profiles. Um, so just started posting on content and everybody found out about my content. And then like everybody would rib me like, I said rib, by the way, I didn't say rim. <laughs> rib, like, as in take the piss out of me. <laughs> Everybody would take the piss out of me and it's really hard to take. Um, so now it feels pretty cool that, you know, the agency is doing really well, six-figure agency. We've got 20 clients within the UK and like everyone takes it a little bit more seriously instead of just laughing at Morgan, <laughs> which obviously, as I say, was difficult at the start and as i say, i got tons of private dms from my old friends old colleagues like where have you been i was really cool to see this is what you've been doing with your time and it was really good to catch up so i really enjoyed that and you know i get a lot of hate from people that i consider my friends and not to sound paranoid because like basically i talked about this in the in another video uh maybe two days ago but sometimes i'd tell somebody who i'd consider a friend like really good news like oh the agency did you know 5k today like absolutely amazing day um, and then I could see in their eyes, they'd be like, oh, nice for you. And like, they wouldn't be happy. Whereas like when somebody tells me good news, you know, I try and be as happy as possible for them. Uh, because obviously I want to show support and make them feel good. And I never got it the other way, especially from a few people that obviously I consider friends. And that I always felt like that's tough to take, you know, because obviously you want to maintain a friendship, but you can also see in someone's eyes, I'm not actually happy for you. But I posted on LinkedIn, my job advert, and like my oldest best friend quoted it within two seconds and he said something along the lines of um everybody needs to apply to this opportunity one of the hardest working people i know amazing opportunity and just like bigging me up and I'm like that that's what good friendship is right and uh, like for a minute i was like you know i'm really like honored to call this guy my friend like what i've known this guy for you know like what uh maybe 13 years it's a long time right <laughs> it's kind of scary how quick that's gone by um but yeah, also I wanted to touch on this video, like getting into some more serious business, like maybe, I don't want to say self-development, but like, just, okay, let's just do business content. Uh, like we can talk tactics all day, right? But at the end of the day, a lot of it comes out, and this is so cliche, but like how bad do you want it? Like I get called extreme a lot, right? By all my friends, by all my family, uh, because, you know, I live in an apartment on my own and I look at the business from, you know, 4 a.m. to about 7 p.m. And I take, you know, an hour for myself to 8 p.m. and then I'll go to bed. Uh, it's a really sad life, but like no social media, no YouTube, no Netflix. I don't really see my friends. Uh, I don't go to family obligations. Um, so I get called extreme a lot, right? And that's just because I'm trying to grow the business. I'm really passionate about it. And I'm not like saying, oh, you need to lock away to grow your business. It's just like, I want to see success ASAP with regards to growing it. So that's what I do. And it's just working well for me. I feel like I've got the bandwidth then. If I cut everything else out, I've got the bandwidth to really focus on the business. And then it scales as a result. So I found that to work really well for me. Um, but like if people ask for business advice, like my advice falls on deaf ears, like admit 10 times out of 10, and it's really frustrating. Like people reach out that I know, uh, especially when it's people I know, because they'll reach out and they'll be like, Morgan, can you help me with this? And I'm like, yeah, of course I can help you with this. And I give them all the advice and it just falls on deaf ears. Like it happens so much and it's really 
it just really annoys me, especially like old friends. Like they'll reach out, Morgan, uh, you built this agency. Can you help me with uh, what I'm doing at the moment? And I'll try and help them. And then the advice always falls on deaf ears, but it always comes down to how bad do you really want it? And I can see like a lot of people don't really want it bad. And it's not me being cliche, like I work harder than you, but like you gotta be passionate about what you're doing. You really wanna, you really have to ha want it, you know? And you can have the business you want, like whoever's watching this, man, you can have the business you want, like, I promise you but it's really, really hard. And it's not complex hard. Like it doesn't take any brain power to figure out how to have a business. Like, easiest thing in the world. <laughs> uh, it's just hard in terms of hours worked, you know? It's how hard is it to conceptualize that you need to do fulfillment. So you actually need to do service delivery for your clients and you need to advertise your service. Like how hard is it to do those two things? And if you want me to break it down for you, you're like Morgan, actually, how do I do that? You get 1% better at your craft every day, whether it's copywriting, SEO, PPC, uh, that's service delivery taken care of and then you do it for your clients. And then for advertising, you do cold outbound paid ads or content. I recommend cold out outbound if you've got you know no money, uh, but you start picking up the phone and phoning up businesses. How hard is that to conceptualize? Um, you do cold calls and you get better at service delivery every day and you have an outstanding business. So it's not hard in terms of complexity. It's hard in terms of hours worked. Like can you, if you really wanna scale your business fast, then you need to be doing, you need to advertise your business from nine to five, like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. But you've also got clients. So you need to serve those clients in that, in that same day and that sometimes means waking up at you know 3 4 a.m and then trying to grind till 9 a.m so you can get all your fulfillment done then and then you've got the hours of 9 till 5 you know all of those hours to advertise your business so that you can get clients on board so that you've got monthly recurring revenue that you can deploy in different areas and start growing your business like that but as i say it's not hard to conceptualize it's hard to do every day like doing the 100 dials like the amount of times i've recommended to people with no money um like if you start with no money just do 100 dials does anybody do 100 dials I haven't met one person like I, I did I did it you know like I'm trying to give you like this is actual advice to grow your agency and I'll be like no that's not it terrible advice I'm like this is this will actually take you you know way past six figures um but like what can you do right you can't help those who, who don't want to be helped my mom says that a lot you can't help those who don't want to be helped she says that a lot uh, especially when I was growing up um and yeah my advice falls on deaf ears right like, I try and tell them I try and help them but the they're almost like asking me, hoping that I'll say, oh, just do X, Y, and Z. It'll take about five minutes and you'll have a seven-figure business. But no, obviously not. You've got to put the effort in. And, you know, if you want to scale your agency fast, you have to advertise from 9 till 5, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the reason why I say that is because to grow your business, there's two things you got to do. You've got to grow your lifetime gross profit or you got to advertise. And, you know, if you're in the early stages, all you need to do is advertise. So 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. should be blocked out to doing, you know, $20 per hour if you're doing cold outbound. If you're doing cold emails and cold DMs, like, again, like, what are you doing? Like, I'm trying to give you, <laughs> I'm trying to give people advice. Like, stop cold emailing and stop cold DMing because it's so hard to be, um, sorry, that's my alarm going off. Um, it's so hard to be successful with cold emails and cold DMs these days if you're not working it with other acquisition methods. If it's like cold call, then cold email, and then cold DM, if you're working them all together, yes, you can make cold outbound very successful. But if you're just shooting over, you know, spam cold emails because it takes you five minutes and you can't be asked to pick up the phone. Because uh, at the end of the at the end of the day, you know, people buy from people, and you're looking for an easy route with like AI to try and shortcut this. And it's just not going to work. Like I always try and give the same advice. Like you got to build the actual relationship. You need to reach out over the phone. Uh, it's cool sending over an introductory cold email, but you got to follow up with a call. Or it's cool sending over an introductory cold DM, but you got to follow up with a call. You got to jump on meetings. Nobody wants to do that. They're trying to close, you know, close deals over emails. Uh, you look like a scammer. Like it's not going to work. Please just listen to me. Get on the phone. I don't want to get on the phone. And you know, I'm like, I just wasted half an hour. Just, of my time trying to give you advice on how to scale your agency but like you think i'm an idiot um for giving you this advice like, it makes no sense right and i'm just trying to help people i swear to you um and somebody asked me to be a mentor today and i do a bit of mentorship on the side like just with people i like and i'm pretty selective about who i did it with and i declined this person but he also asked yeah he also asked me for free actionable pieces of advice and i actually like I read the message and I aired him like purposely. So I'll give myself, you know, a few hours to think about it. And I'm actually going to write a reply after this. So like when people DM me, I would really try and put thought into um, the thing I'm going to say back because obviously they've done the time to watch my content and I'm trying to provide as much value as possible. So if somebody DMs me, like the least I could do is try and help them. So like whilst most of my advice does fall on deaf ears, I do try and help people, you know. And I was thinking, number one, 
in terms of advice. I thought I'd just share it here. Uh, I'd be ten. I'd be ten times further if someone had told me just to do one thing. Just do one thing, Morgan, because out there there's somebody who's focused on one thing and that's all they care about, and they're going to be the best, right? Whereas if you if you think you're good enough to be spinning this plate, this plate, this plate, this plate, and this plate, if you're trying to have the best SEO agency whilst having I don't know, the best web design agency and you mow the grass sometimes, that's another business you have and you do some barbering, like you're going to fail, right? Just do one thing, put everything into one thing. And that even goes from the small things like uh, social media, watching YouTube, Netflix, get that out of your life. Just do one thing with your life. If you put all your attention, energy and time into say a copywriting business, that's going to go really far because uh, literally you put every part of your being into this business. It's going to go really far. And I wish somebody had told me this because at the beginning, I was trying to balance so many things, whether it be, uh, you know, friendships, whether it be going to play football, it'd be my physique. I had a really good physique uh, prior to starting the business. I don't really anymore. Uh, I have like no muscle mass left. Uh, it's really embarrassing. But believe it or not, I was about, well, I was, I still am 5'10", but I was about 170 pounds, 11 to 12% body fat. So it's a fairly good physique, uh, but I've lost that now. And it is what it is, right? But I was trying to juggle so many plates and I wish somebody had told me, Morgan, if you want this SEO agency to actually go far and you want to do it ASAP, put everything into it. And that means you can't be good at everything, right? You got to put everything into this. And I wish somebody had told me that because it would have you know, scaled me faster. The more attention you put into one thing, the faster it's going to scale. Uh, number two, I wish somebody had told me it's okay to love from afar. And I mean that for family, friends and relationships. Um, because if you're going in this direction, and there's other people going in this direction, but you know they're really close to you, whether they're family, friends, or I'm really, really close to my friends and I'm really close to my family. Um, and I like to think so anyway. Uh, but if they're going that way, you can still go that way. And you just have to love from afar. You can't keep going out with your friends on the weekends. It's going to take away from your goals. And if you really want to go to your goals, sometimes you have to have that conversation where it's like, hey guys, I'm really trying to go over here. Like it's all love, but for the next six months, I just gotta grind this way. And I appreciate you guys are going this way and you're really trying to enjoy your life, but I just gotta go this way. And as I say, it's all love, you know? You gotta have that conversation sometimes. I wish somebody had told me that because I was trying to go this way and then I'd try and go out with my friends on like the weekend and I'd try and recover and try and keep plodding on this way, but it's really like pushing me back. Um, so I wish somebody had told me it's okay to have that conversation where, you know, you explain you're going this way and guys, I, I just want to take three to six months to 12 months, eight, whatever your thing is, like your time horizon. I just need to take a break from, you know, going out um, or going to these family obligations. It doesn't mean that it's not all love. Uh, it just means like, I'm really trying to achieve this and hopefully you respect that and I'll be back as soon as it's done. Um, and they should respect your goals, right? Especially if it's a loved one. Um, and then number three, I wish somebody had told me your environment matters, you know, 50 times more than your willpower. And I only really figured this out, you know, the last three months, which is stupid, but I always relied on willpower. Like, I'm just going to grind harder. I'm just going to grind harder. I'm just going to grind harder. And just really like banging my head against the wall. Like, I just need to work harder. And even now, you know, I rely on a lot of willpower, but I'm always trying to orient my environment these days to make working as hard as I can, as easy as I can. That just means removing my phone, uh, removing all visual distractions, like, in front of me is a white wall and I just look at that white wall, you know, uh, maybe like 16 hours a day. <laughs> uh, my phone's not in the room. Um, what else? I have an alarm clock, which I just make sure I'm doing all my tasks within the within the time slot, time slot and then just moving on to the next task. We do that all day and just really ori orienting my environment for productivity. You don't want to rely on willpower to think about what things destroy your productivity. Um, and just, I always like to use Charlie Munger's inverse thinking. So he'd always say like, what would destroy your productivity? And I'd be like, hmm, what would destroy my productivity? Uh, if I kept my phone right next to me, that's all my productivity gone. Uh, if I keep YouTube open on my laptop, productivity will be, you know, horrendous. If, you know, I keep the Xbox in the room, productivity will be horrendous. So I, I flip that and then I'm like, okay, so if I don't keep my phone around me, if I make sure YouTube is not on my laptop and I don't keep my Xbox in the room, I'm going to be quite productive. So I always like flip it, uh, solve it because humans are better at solving problems. Yeah, humans are better at solving problems than coming up with solutions. That was his reasoning. I've just used it, you know, probably every day of my life uh, for like the last six months, just Charlie Munger's inverse thinking. It's really, it's really quite uh, interesting. And for example, you can, you can apply this to anything. I'm just going to go on a quick rant about it because I find it so helpful. Uh, but like, if I was trying to grow my personal brand, I'd be like, what would destroy my personal brand? Okay, if I don't post consistently, that will destroy my personal brand. If I don't share any value, if I'm not authentic, and if I 
always trying to, you know, shove a product down my audience's throats. Those things will destroy my productivity. So on the flip side, if I wanted to grow my personal, uh, those things would destroy my personal brand. So on the flip side, if I wanted to grow my personal brand, um, I'd post consistently. I'd always try and share value. I'd always be authentic. And I wouldn't wouldn't try and sell things and shove, you know, products down my uh, audience's uh, throats. And that's always worked well for me. And talking of content, I want to touch on this. The content that I enjoy the most is people who document without any monetization for their videos. So I watch a lot of like agency YouTubers and there's always like a product in their content, whether it's like school is like the thing popping out. Uh, some people have like a VSL. Um, and although, although they can provide value, right? Uh, especially if it's a VSL, a lot of these are like VSLs to courses and uh, like the video is made to, you know, break a belief and really like push on this one agenda, which then funnels into a course. Well, it's really clever. I never really relate to those because I can kind of see the agenda. Uh, whereas all the content that I enjoy is documentation without any monetization. So like my favorite videos on YouTube are Alex or Moses old content. Uh, so I don't really like all the effects and that when it comes to a YouTube video, I just like somebody talking to a camera and I really like someone being authentic and just capturing your train of thought. Uh, and that really tends to be my favorite content. So if you look back at his old YouTube videos, he might just be waffling about you know, the 50 things he learned uh, over the last year. This was back in like 2021. He made a video on like 50 things he learned. And it's just him talking, talking, and just trying to provide as much value and going through his trains of thoughts with different um, ideas. And I find that really interesting. So I don't really like the edits and like all the, I don't know. I don't know, like, you know how they try and make it really engaging, switching from topic to topic, visual to visual, uh, you know, trying to make it pop. And I don't really like that. I really like just somebody who I'm talking. I like Naval's podcast. So, you know, if you want to check out Naval, he's been like a very, he's been an entrepreneur who changed my life, you know. Uh, I was a senior recruitment consultant just as a side story. And I read Naval's book and I quit that week because I'm done. You know, that's how life changes his book is. I highly recommend you read it. And even Sam Suluk, why do you think like he's so popular? He's just like documenting his life. Uh, and it's really authentic, right? Just trying to share things that have helped him. And I really like content like that. It's not really like fast paced, you know, uh, but again, I enjoy it. And this really got me thinking, like, I'm just going to close off with this. Like one thing that I always think about is like, what am I optimizing for? So my good friend, Dave, uh, he's one of my closest friends, actually. And it's kind of funny because all my closest friends are, have been my closest friends for, you know, like 13 years. <laughs> it's been a long time, right? Uh, since I was about 11 years old, like my group of friends. And then um, I worked in a recruitment agency and Dave become uh, Dave has become one of my like, really good friends and he asked me in the gym uh, if, if you just well he said to me in the gym like if you just focus on your diet you can be leaner and I remember thinking about that and so like, I can be leaner but you can like, what am I optimizing for and it's not to bash Dave or anything it, I was just thinking about this after um, like it just got me thinking like, what am I optimizing for because I was thinking like oh actually I should go on a diet because I could get leaner but then what am I optimizing for? It's actually not to do with aesthetics or physique. I'm optimizing for the business. And it comes back to the thing that I believe in my whole heart, right? You can be great at anything, just not everything. So choose in advance what you're going to suck at. Like, okay, I'm going to have a shit physique, okay? Because um, the more you sacrifice, right? And the more the tension you can put into that one thing. But because you sacrifice, it means you're going to be shit at a lot of things. So choose in advance what you're going to suck at. Actually, I'm going to have a shit physique. I'm not going to have great. Now, Chris Williamson talks about this as well. Uh, I think I heard it. That's where I'm getting this from. <laughs> I just in the back of my head. Uh, but he talks about, yeah, choosing the bands, what you're going to suck at. Uh, you, might have not, you might not have the good physique. You might not have, you know, the friendships that you want for a little while. You might not have to be able to go to family obligations. You might suck at all of those things. You might not have a great day in life, but you're doing that so that you can actually be great with the business. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm not saying you should do anything. I'm just saying uh, that's a helpful frame that I've used with growing the business. And also I'm hiring. So if you're looking for an entry level uh, sales position, uh, be sure to shoot me a message on one of the platforms. But yeah, appreciate your time and I'll see you tomorrow.